Hello. So today we're doing something a little bit different. We have four random products. And uh, Danny, let me ask you a question. You got a birthday coming up? Yeah, there's uh, still a few months left. Okay then this video is exactly for you. It's about great gifts, and these all fall around the $30 range. We've also got one more, which is the AirTag, which uh, it's a little bit dated, but I think it's about time we finally did a review on it. Yeah, and we've got something for every interest, so be sure to stick around. So, We'll start off with a fun one. Especially if you're a geography nerd or travel lover. Or it's perfect for a kid uh, learning about the world. But dude, can we even call this tech? I mean, we are tech I want after all. True, fair point, dude. But uh, I guess this would be considered innovation. You know, like perhaps a, a century ago, maybe this would have been something innovative. But in the 21st century, this would look great on, on an office wall. Uh, because of the muted tones and the wood veneer. It has a classy look that can go pretty much with any decor. Yeah, I was originally expecting it would be something, you know, like a little bit more childish. Kind of like those kid maps with the bright colors. Right. Or, you know, those atlases that you'd have at school. But no, instead these look like they're, they've gone for enhancing the natural wood qualities, the tones. Doing it in a kind of digital way makes for this kind of strange look. Yeah. but artistic nonetheless. Yeah, and you know, like looking at each piece, they seem appropriate to scale. I mean, I would assume that Russia being gigantic compared to let's say Bulgaria, which is about the size of my thumb. Oh, Russia. Yeah, so, and this is only part of Russia. It actually is three pieces. And each country, of course, says the country's name. Some major cities, the different rivers are there. There's no detailed topographical information or reliefs, or no mountains or other cities other than the major, major provinces and capitals. Yeah, it's a cool piece to play around with. I think this would be fun for anyone to put together once, probably. And then after that, you'd have it on display. And you can even, with the pins that are included, tack on to the map and show the locations where you've been and maybe even better, make all those who see it jealous with where you've gone. Yeah, I can imagine all those accountants out there would like to keep their trips to the Cayman Islands a secret. Right, maybe no, no pin mark on that yeah, one. Yeah, right? yeah, keep that one a secret. And I really think this is something that could be really great for kids in terms of a fun educational tool that's also going to make them shut up <laughs> and sit down for a long period of time. Right. Uh, and that's because, but at the same time, on the box, it says this is a challenge to put together. But I guess that all depends on your level of geography knowledge. Maybe more about what part of the world you're from. Or if you're a toddler. Or perhaps you don't have opposable thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I find the most surprising, though, is that you cannot separate the individual countries. But most of the U.S. comes in one piece, South America here comes in one piece. But also the biggest puzzle is how to display this thing. There is no frame or mounting board, but a rolled up strip of extremely sticky icky icky <laughs> that we assume is to stick to the wall. But there's no attached direction. Yeah, and with us having even less ambition, we still don't know what this mystery red stuff is. But thanks to the how-to video on YouTube that you can find by scanning this QR code, we know it's double-sided tape. And it's strong. I had Sardinia hanging up for, for hours and holding on to the entire roll of tape. Just make sure that wherever you stick that thing, you're happy for it to stay there forever or don't mind replastering the entire wall later. It's kind of tough understanding the amount of space that's needed as well for setting up a piece like this. So we recommend putting it all together on the ground first, measure the amount of space needed, then set it up on the wall using the guides provided. So what do you got there? I've got Australia. This fits in one. It's a continent, no? It's yeah. missing New Zealand, which we were saying earlier about the islands. There's tons of them and tons of little additions. So let's spill these out. Boom, there it is, right off the bat, New Zealand. Nice find. There, we've got the continent. And so it's, lots of these islands are pretty small, and I like kind of the detail that they've gone into with these. Um, no, and there's really all nice. these cool, cool additions. Like you got your compass, you've even got the oceans. Which way around is this? There you go, Atlantic Ocean. Or maybe because you're in the camera, I need to read it like this, Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, and, and then fun things like a, a sailboat. Enjoy yeah, <laughs> enjoy the wood. I love their tag phrase, enjoy the wood. Conjures up all kinds of wonderful imagery. I mean, ultimately, this looks like a really nice game that's also a wall display, a nice piece of artwork that you can put together and continuously interact with, and most definitely a fun way 
to track your travels. Our next product is much smaller, probably one of the smallest in its category. Mantis makes what might be the world's smallest foldable laptop stand. Or fold handler, as what's written on there. I don't even know what that name means, but uh, I love these names people come up with. There's nothing wrong with them. It might even just be a very creative use of the English language. Or they have no clue what they're doing. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Either way, they somehow always come out with these very interesting names. And names aside, it is definitely small. When I first looked at it, I thought it looked like part of the map. Uh, maybe it was meant to hold up the US so that it was higher than everything else. I mean, it does kind of feel like a puzzle in and of itself. It was a challenge to get it open the first time, twisting and turning, but uh, once you get used to it, you have this pocketable laptop stand that you can take pretty much anywhere. And I mean, it's so true about the fans. I know I don't really use a laptop stand. My computer overheats, it slows down, makes a ton of noise, essentially gets very grumpy when I'm working on it on the table or on my lap. So something like this that basically folds down into what looks like a little pocket knife that fits in your pocket is, is pretty great. Yeah, and it does look like a pocket knife. Can you imagine if they'd had taken another page out of the Folding Knives book and allowed you to rapidly <laughs> deploy it like a butterfly knife? Or just throw it up in the air and watch it unfold itself before it lands on the table? Yeah, like one of those party balls, yeah? Yeah. But for now, it has these four non-stick pads here and here uh, to prevent your laptop from sliding down. But it also has these legs that stick out because apples are really slippery and your laptop will slide. But luckily, if we pop these out, place your laptop right there. The tilt is a little bit higher than I like, but according to them, this is the perfect tilt, 20 degrees, I think. And we were trying to figure out, you know, is there a way to make it tilt less? And I guess you could fold these back. But, but I think that would make it tilt more, right? The angle would be more extreme. Yeah, and you'd need a pretty small laptop to fit, <laughs> fit it on here. Maybe even a, or a gigantic smartphone like this. <laughs> I guess, but for $25, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, it's a great buy for that price. Yeah. It's aluminum, it's lightweight, and definitely that folding down mechanism, the compact, minimal laptop stand, you know, stick it in your pocket and you're ready to go. Nice. Are we ready to go on to the next product? Let's do it. Our next product is even smaller, but slightly more popular. Slightly, come on. It's the freaking AirTag. Right, right. Yeah, okay, it's a little popular. Maybe a lot popular. And our review is a little late on this one, but as neither of us are really Apple users, uh, we were out of the loop on this one. I originally just thought it's a regular old key finder or Bluetooth tracker. You attach it to your keys, stick it in your bag or in your lover's pocket, and you can track and find them on your phone. Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> what a stalker. But when a friend showed us the other day, I was actually pretty surprised. I mean, it's way smaller than I pictured. It's got this typical pseudo fancy kind of iPhone coating that gets scratched and dull after a couple of days use. And it's very minimal. I mean, there's not even a way to attach it to your keys. No. For that, you need to purchase a separate holder or key ring, which Apple is of course selling for more than the AirTag itself. And with brands like Hermes, um, they're even selling luxury luggage tags for it for upwards of $700. The pairing is, is as simple and intuitive as you'd expect from any Apple product. You just open the Find My app on your iPhone 11 or newer. Yeah. You add a new item, you find the AirTag, you select what it is from this list of typical items, or you can also create your custom item, you know, if it's not in that list. Right. Then, no matter where you leave your keys, whether they're in the cracks of your sofa or a pile of dirty laundry, you can always see them on the map or ping them with your phone to hear a little alarm directly from the AirTag. I kind of expected the alarm to be a little bit louder, but it's, it's pretty faint, so you might not hear it if you've left your keys under a pile of dirty laundry. I'm dying! Actually, on newer iPhones, you can even get directions to it until you're literally standing on top of the device. So you don't even really need the noise. But this isn't really what's cool about them anyways. I mean, key finders are nothing new. They've been around since before smartphones and Bluetooth. 
but Apple has leveraged its ubiquity to make what is probably the apex of this technology. <laughs> you like my vocabulary right That's there? A, impressive. <laughs> While Tile and other Bluetooth trackers on the market need you to be in close proximity and use your own phone's Bluetooth to connect with the tracker, Apple relies on the fact that there's probably always an iPhone nearby. You could lose your keys in Paris and still see them on your map from New York when you get back. And once you realize you've lost them, and when you're stuck out in the rain and can't get back into your apartment. All you need to do is add a digital label to them so that when whoever finds them finds them, they know who to call. We gotta call the of course, they encrypt all this so that other people can't find your keys when you don't want them to. Uh, because your AirTag is meant to be yours, and yours alone, you can even customize it with some text or an emoji or two. But don't expect anything fancy. I think it's just four letters that you can write on it, two emojis, and it's all this gray color. You can't get that nice, flashy, yeah. smiley face or something on it. So, in the end of the day, what do you think? Uh, we're not iPhone users, we're not really Mac users, but it seems like a pretty cool product. I mean, the fact that you can find this anywhere like, it's not dependent on your 30 meter radius of Bluetooth. I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah. The fact that they've realized, hey, there's apples and iPhones and iPads all over the world. Let's use that network to secretly track everyone. The AirTag works with your, with one of those regular watch batteries that you need to change out, I think, once a year. That's how much charge this will hold, which is pretty impressive. Oh, there's that sound. You can't charge it wirelessly on, on your Apple Watch charger or something like that. I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. But for charging any Apple device, check out our next review. Another great gift for those who love to travel. I'm starting to kind of sense a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> the Moo Point is a sleek, stylish upgrade to your normal USB device charger. Named because you have Mo points <laughs> to plug into. <laughs> Nailed it. The biggest thing that jumps out at me is the fact that this charger is lightweight. And this is because of the GAN, gallium uh, nitrogen. Idiot. Yeah, okay. gallium nitride. Oh. It was originally used for LEDs and uh, satellites of all things, and is now used for semiconductors and chargers, and has pretty much replaced previous technologies. And this is because it is more reliable and lightweight than traditional devices. I mean, you remember those bulky charging stations, but this has everything built in. You're pretty much guaranteed a fast charge for your connected devices thanks to its 66 watt quick charge, along with performance improvements over traditional chargers and USB-C, two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. Yeah, and on top of how practical it is, also a charger like this uh, lets off a lot less heat than traditional chargers, adding to the safety and performance specs. Yeah, I did notice that my charger would heat up a little when I used it, but much less than the typical USB wall charger that I have at home. Yeah, and so along with the charging device itself, there are three adapters that come with the Mo Point so that you can easily plug into any outlet. Yeah, any outlet in the world, because I mean, this is pretty compact as it is. You got this, what is it, the American 110 volt plug? Yep. But you can also clip in, say the European one right here. Yeah, and this works in both like America, Europe, and everywhere else, between 110 and 240 volts. So you can safely take it wherever you go throughout the world. Right. I do like how the adapters attach while the default prongs are folded up so that there is no extra space being taken up. And all of this packs up into this nice travel case for easy handling. <laughs> so easy, oh, dude. Oh, He's so I, easy. I yeah, it's yeah. So easy. It's just large enough for the charger and maybe one one of the adapters. But I guess if you're traveling, you kind of know where you're going, which adapter you need to pack. So you don't really, I don't know which trips you'd need to go on that you'd need all three together. Yeah, but... I mean, I guess if you're traveling the world. Right, <laughs> then you want to take them all. <laughs> but I imagine you have a lot of room in your suitcase if you're traveling the world. Enough for the three adapters. Which is why this product is pretty awesome for anyone who likes to travel. I, I would highly recommend it. Or those who find themselves in a different part of the world for extended periods of time. Yeah, I mean, I personally want one of these for myself, but coming in at around $40, I would rather steal this one than buy one for myself. <laughs> Either way, it is an investment, and a smart one too, that can make your life a lot easier and more versatile.
So remember to consider one of these products for the next gift you want to buy for someone else. Danny, did you find one that you really wanted? Uh, yeah, I think the, the Mo Point is probably the most practical among them, but the, the map, I actually really like that. And all the links for all of these products are in the description below. Yeah, and remember to give us a big like if you like what we're doing, and please subscribe. Yeah, give us a comment as well, you know? How did this format work where we've smudged four products together, you know? Would it be better to extend these out for longer periods of time? I mean, I can already see our producer in the back going like, cut it short, man. You guys have gone on for way too long. I can go on for hours about wooden maps. He enjoys it. <laughs> I, I like the wood. What was the phrase on there? I enjoy the wood. <laughs> okay. Oh, too much information. So, this was Tech I Want. I'm Dan, Rafi. Till next time. Bye. See you guys.